Hello everyone, welcome back. This video we're going to start our talk on functions and how to create a function. So when you're first starting out, it's probably best to kind of realize the need for a function because you're probably going to be writing a bunch of code in main and eventually you're going to come up with some series of codes that, <laughs> I say codes, it's like something like a, a not computer person would say, like you're typing codes. <laughs> Anyways, you're, you're going to you're going to find some lines of code that you would like to repeat. And when that happens, generally that's a good use or a good time to think of maybe creating a function. So we're going to start in main and we're going to try to write code to calculate the factorial of something. So just for you guys to understand, a factorial is when you take a number such as five and you put in math, you'd put the uh, exclamation mark. And basically that means five times four times three times two and I think times one, but doesn't really matter. So that's essentially what we're going to do. So what we might have is we might have a number that we want to take the factorial of. And what we're going to do is basically create a for loop. And uh, let's say we're going to start, we're going to set i equal to five and we're going to count down. So as long as i is greater than one, because we don't actually have to multiply by one, then we when then we uh, decrement and then what we can do is we basically keep track of what the number is so let's just start with one uh, the reason I'm using one is because we're multiplying if we set it to zero and started multiplying we wouldn't get any value so one's not going to change the the multiplication at all but it's going to allow us to actually keep track of the value that way so we might do something like this factorial and then we're going to multiply that by i. So if you guys aren't familiar with this, this is the same thing as doing uh, just a shorthand. So you can put the uh, multiplication on the left-hand side of the equal sign. So what's gonna happen is i is gonna be five, and we're gonna do one times five, and then it's gonna decrement down to four. We're gonna do whatever that value is. Well, it's gonna be five. Five times four times three times two times one, and so forth. And then at the end, we're going to print that value. And we can say the factorial of the number is the number. So number is the number we're asking for uh, the factorial of, and then factorial is the actual result. And then we can return zero, the program's done. So let's try it out. The factorial of five is 120. So it seems to be working, but now the issue is, you know, what if we wanted to calculate the factorial of, mm, I don't know, 20, the factorial of 120, and we just wanted to, well, that's a really big number. <laughs> um, and we just wanted to keep doing it until we, we got tired of calculating the factorial. Well, we might have to go in here, we might have to change this hard-coded value, and then we'd have to keep running the program and you know it's just not very scalable right and especially if you wanted to calculate the factorial twice in one program you'd have to basically copy all this code and paste it below and then change some things and it's just really not that good so this is where there's a huge red flag that we might want to create a function now if you look at main this is actually a function and we're going to basically create another function so we can kind of follow the format of main so it has a data type. This is what's known as the return type. And that is the value it gives back. So you can think of the function as basically something we throw some data at and it throws some data back. It does all the work for us. We don't have to do anything. We just have to create it. So it's going to create, it's going to return an integer because the end result right here is an integer. And it's always gonna be an integer is when we're calculating the factorial because like I said in the previous videos, Integers times integers always give you integers. That's a concept known as closure. So it's going to return an integer and we can just call it factorial. So this is the structure, but so main doesn't have anything in these parentheses. I think you can put some stuff in there if you want to take like command line arguments or whatever. But for factorial, we definitely want to take something as a parameter, take it as an argument and store it in a parameter. So it would look something like this number. 
So this is the equivalent to this. What are we trying to calculate the factorial of? And then what we're going to do is we're going to return the result, which is going to be factorial. And we need to declare that up here, just like, just like we're continuing from right here. So, so we start with one and then we go through the process of this multiplication. All right, so now I think our function works because we have the number and we have the factorial. All the other code works 